am Nathaniel Rumpel Jansen. I am your local boss man. And today, I want to talk to you about Zelda fans. And my big problem with the Zelda fan base. And then I'm going to end this episode with a little bit of a twist. I'm going to do an unboxing of a new item I found at GameStop that has to do with Majora's Mask 3D. The item's already been unboxed and is sitting on my desk right over this way. So today, I wanted to talk to you about you, the Zelda fan. And this doesn't apply to everyone, but this applies to enough people that I feel this point needs to be addressed. It's that Zelda fans, and probably fans in general, but I'm going to stick to just Zelda fans, have this, this repeating thing going on throughout the fan base of judging other fans. Now, obviously, as human beings, we are always judge, and it is our human right to feel free to judge. But we judge what makes someone a fan. And that bothers me. As an example, someone might have just played their very first game in the Zelda series and playing Majora's Mask 3D. And a lot of Zelda fans will be, well, he's not really a real Zelda fan because he's only played Majora's Mask. He hasn't played Ocarina of Time, hasn't played The Legend of Zelda on NES, doesn't know about the Tingle games, doesn't know about BS Zelda and the Ancient Stone tablets, doesn't have Hyrule Historia, has, doesn't even own a Wii U, let's say. And we'll be all, oh, he's not a real fan. He's not a true fan. He's a casual. He's this. He's that. He's not, I I can't even call him a fan. He's just someone who tried out a Zelda game. I I hate that. I hate that. Why, Why do we have this incessant need to rank what makes someone a fan? To me, a fan of the Zelda series is just someone who played at least one Zelda game. They don't even have to have beaten that game, but they have enjoyed their time playing that game and that they themselves say, hey, look, I'm a fan of that game. And you know what? I'm probably going to be a fan of the series. So I am a Zelda fan. That's fine. Why Why does it have to be any more than that to become a Zelda fan? Now, I'm not going to say there's not a difference between Zelda fans. That There's not some that are, you know more or less experienced than other fans of course i've been doing this zelda thing for fan sites for 17 years back, dating all the way back to 1998 when ocarina of time came out so when i launched my very first fan site and obviously ocarina of time had a big a big deal with why i did launch a fan site at the time but my point is is that obviously i've played you know all 17 zelda games i've played the cdi games i've played some of the tingle games I haven't played Tetris slash Navi's Trackers yet, but I've played a lot of the Zelda games, even the Game & Watch, and I haven't beaten every single one. I'm not going to sit here and be, oh man, I've beaten all 17 Zelda games, I've beaten them you know, hundreds of times. That's not true. I haven't actually beaten every Zelda game, but I've played every Zelda game, and I've seen the ending of every Zelda game. I'm a pretty, you know, I guess what you would say a pretty big fan. I've been theorizing about the series for years. I, I, don't, I don't own a physical copy of Hyrule Historia, but I do own a Wii U that has a digital copy of it. So I've actually read front to back Hyrule Historia, and I often reference it when I'm debunking fan theories or trying to come up with my own. In the grand scheme, I'm a pretty big Zelda fan, but I'm not sitting here telling someone, say, my best buddy Eric, who also enjoys Zelda games, that, hey, you're not a real Zelda fan because you don't own all the Nintendo systems, you don't own all the Zelda games, you haven't played all the Zelda games, and, you know, you visit my website, and you shouldn't be visiting my website because you're not a real Zelda fan. It's kind of infuriating to me in a bit. Uh, I've seen this comments, and and maybe we'll put some comments up here in the video, of people who say, you know, you're not a Zelda fan if, you know, you haven't played Ocarina of Time. You're not a Zelda fan if you don't know about Ancient Stone Tablets. You're not a Zelda fan, period, if all you do is just like Zelda and actually don't know a whole lot about it. You aren't aware of all the intricacies of all the different characters and the lore and all that such. And I hate that because we should be a very inclusive community. That's what I want Zelda Informer to be. I want us to be able to invite everyone, be it the 8-year-olds who are just trying out the game, or heck, even if you're an adult and just trying out the game, everyone from age 6 and 8 all the way to age 100. They all should be welcome here at Zelda Informer. We shouldn't, they shouldn't be coming here 
to be judged. Because that's not why fans are here. Fans are here to profess their love of this other series. Or, you know, if they if they love it to a point that they're able to criticize, they're able to criticize some things they don't like about the Zelda series. But we're still all here because we like Zelda. And really, that's all the parameters should be to be a Zelda fan. That you like Zelda. Period. End of story. So why do we have to tell fans that they're not fans? I, I, don't, I don't get this. I also don't get some of the fan bickering that goes on where someone has an opinion and then we have to attack that opinion because we don't agree with it. And then we say, oh, well, if you look at this unobjectively, at the same time as that person who just said, if you look at the game objectively, that uh, they at the same time are actually not looking at it objectively. They're putting their own opinions into saying that this mechanic is better for them than a mechanic in a different game. And that that's just clashing and ironic and it's not right i'm not saying let's stop the debates i'm not saying let's not you know correct fans when they're wrong i'm just saying that why can't we be nicer about it be more inclusive and understanding that not everyone knows everything about zelda and just because some fans visit or you guys visit zeldainformer.com or our youtube channel or our facebook or our twitter or our google plus or our tumblr uh, if you guys visit anything that has to do with our website, it doesn't necessarily mean that you know a whole lot about Zelda. And that's a misnomer that needs to be tossed away, just thrown out the window. There's this general opinion out there that if you visit a site like Zelda Informer, you're obviously a mega fan of Zelda. And I, I, I just, that's been proven untrue time and time again. People who are just fans in general of Zelda like it. Um, as an example, because uh, people like to throw out the term casual a lot, I'm kind of a casual fan of the Witcher series. I have played the Witcher 1, but I never beat it. I played the Witcher 2, I got about three quarters into it, but I never beat it. Uh, and I'm probably going to play the Witcher 3, but I'm not like this huge fan. I don't read into all the lore behind it. I don't follow all the developer interviews and the videos about everything going on with the game. But that doesn't mean I'm not interested in the game. That doesn't mean that I won't go to a Witcher fan site once in a while just to see what's going on. And that that's what happens with casual fans. And this ignores the fact that the last time I heard anything about the Witcher was on Facebook. I had a mention of it from a fan page about The Witcher that I liked. Because I do like The Witcher. Just because I don't follow it religiously doesn't mean I don't like the series. And they had an update, and that update appeared in my feed, and I read it, and I went to that website. And th this is what we have to understand, is that Zelda Informer encompasses an entire world of fans. It's not just the elite of the elite fans. Even though a majority of our audience is adults, it doesn't mean all of those adults are exactly top-tier Zelda fans. When I say top-tier, I mean that notion that they've played every game, you know everything about the series, you are inside my brain and can understand what I'm saying and look at it objectively and because objectively I'm just talking opinions. It's dumb. So let's be nice to each other. Let's be inclusive to each other. If a fan doesn't know about something, let's inform them. I mean, we are Zelda Informer. We're here to let fans know about the things that they don't know about. So let's inform them. No matter how old the game is or how new the game is, it doesn't matter. Let's help our fans out. Let's make them more knowledgeable about the series if they want to know that knowledge. And let's not be mean about it. And this brings me to my last point I wanted to bring up about fans. Uh, we had a case of a severe case of bullying going on on our Facebook page. And our Facebook page is not the only place this happens. Uh, we have a strict um, no attacking other people policy at Zelda Informer. This includes our Facebook, our Twitter, our comments at Zelda Informer, etc. And there's only so much we can do in terms of banning people. I, I just wanted to bring up that bullying, uh, whether you intend to be mean or not, you have to be conscientious of what you're saying to people on the internet. And I know, I know, this is the internet. You know, I'm going to be called fat because, hey, I am fat. I'm going to be called stupid. I'm going to be called, you know, a retard. And none of these words are okay to use, especially the retard word. Uh, that has a connotation that goes well beyond trying to call someone stupid. If you're trying to call me stupid, just call me stupid. Or better yet, defeat what I'm saying instead of just acting like I'm some big bumbling idiot, which I know I can be at times. I think that the bullying stuff needs to go away. It needs to stop. We had a fan... And I'm not going to say any names, and I'm not going to go too deep into it, but we had a fan who attempted to commit suicide last week. And they attempted to commit suicide over something that was said on our Facebook page. Not just something, and not just someone, but several somethings and several someones. And this disturbed me. 
uh, disturb me greatly. And I called and I have it all confirmed. Uh, but I'm not going to share any of that information with you guys because I know what the internet does when they get a hold of this public information. And I'm ashamed that I can't be more forthright because I have to protect this person. Uh, this is the kind of stuff that needs to stop. We, we can't be having this going on at Zelda Informer. And I understand it goes on in the internet all the time. Uh, and I have had it happen to me. Uh, I have had death threats against me and death threats against my family. Obviously, nothing's ever come of it. And I doubt anything ever will. But it's still one of those things that we need to stop attacking people and just thinking it's okay because I'm anonymous and I'm on the internet and no one's going to do anything about it. It's it's silly. And I don't want to start reporting you guys to the authorities just because, you know, our fans are getting depressed over things that you're saying to them. Let's, let's all be kind and rewind <laughs> um, and, and think about what we're going to say before we say it, okay? Even if you think it's not a big deal. You know, to say someone's ugly, even if you legitimately think they're ugly. You know, it's it's like I learned growing up as a religious person is if you don't have anything nice to say, just don't say it at all. That doesn't mean you can't be critical. That doesn't mean you can't be constructive. It just means you need to be a, a bit more conscientious that everyone in life, everyone on the Internet comes from different backgrounds. Um, as an example, growing up, and this is a story I told on Facebook, I don't know how many people read it. I tried to commit suicide twice in my life, and I've thought about it probably four or five other times. And the only reason I failed at the suicide is because I was a kid. And as a kid, I didn't know how to do things properly. I tried to hang myself, and I didn't tie the knot properly, so the rope knot came loose. And I ended up falling down about 10 feet, and got severely hurt until my parents found me and then the other time I took a bunch of pills and again my parents found me and I had my stomach pumped at the hospital so I've had some serious things happen to me over over my life because I was bullied I was made fun of and a lot of this happened when I was at school um, I was called four eyes because I had glasses you know I was told I wasn't good enough to hang out with certain people that I wasn't good enough at sports I was I was picked on, I, and uh, by the time I hit high school, I actually got physically beat up at a football game underneath the bleachers, and that's, I was standing up for someone, and then, because they wouldn't stand up for themselves, because I had learned that maybe when you, I thought, yeah, you stand up to bullies, maybe they'll back down, I mean, they didn't back down, they kicked the crap out of me, and no one did anything about it, and this kind of stuff needs to stop, those, those people didn't realize that I had grown up mostly without a father, no, I'm not saying my father wasn't there, he was there, my parents are married, they're still married. But he was working 60 to 80 hour weeks, and I didn't see him a whole lot. I saw him occasionally on the weekend, sometimes at a baseball game, and, you know, I, he just kind of came in and out of my life while he could afford to, because he was too busy putting a roof over our head and putting food on our table. I got bullied, um, to the, you know, and, and made fun of, and I didn't know what to do about it, because my dad wasn't around to teach me basically how to be a man, and how to stand up for myself, and how to put bullies in their place so they stop doing it. And the thing is, they're not just doing it to me, they're doing it to others. And as I grew up, there were friends of mine and people I was aware of in my town that actually did commit suicide suicide and were able to complete it and didn't fail like me and a lot of it got linked back to bullying and that upsets me and now that it's happened at our website because of somebody or an attempt because of stuff that people on our website are saying i'm deeply disturbed for personal reasons and for the obvious reasons that this shouldn't be happening en encompassing the whole not judging other people and not um, telling them you know, how, how much or how little of a fan they are and belittling them because they don't know as much about the series as you do. We also have to be conscientious that everyone comes from different backgrounds. Uh, as an example, one person told me that I should go die in a fire. Now, that might seem like you know an internet joke, oh, go die in a fire. Well, when I was a kid, I almost did die in a fire. Um, my whole family almost died in a fire, in a house fire. And I, you know, that's not a joke to me to say that. It might be a joke to you, but it's something that actually happened in my life. But it, when they said it, they don't know that background about me. So I can say, oh, they don't know that, so I should forgive them. But because, you know, when you're a kid, you're not able to necessarily get that. And when you're an adult, say you've been picked on your whole life or you're really sensitive about certain topics, and someone calls you a retard, that could send you way off on a tangent, especially if you know people that are mentally handicapped. It's, it's a problem. And it's a problem I don't want at Zelda Informer. So we are cracking down. We are banning people and getting them off of our website and off of our Facebook and social media because we want a friendly and company, encompassing place. So this is kind of a, a warning, um, a plead, you know, showing my desires for the kind of community I want Zelda Informer to be. So please, 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 please think before you say things. And if you just want to troll and have your fun, 
then you could you could just do that elsewhere because we just don't want that here. Too many people are being affected. And the last thing I need to do is get an email, get a phone call, get a letter in the mail that somebody died because of something our fans did. So please stop. Obviously, we got an unboxing coming up I'm pretty excited about. So we'll try to switch tones here, get a bit more excited. So, uh, yeah, here we go. Here's the unboxing. Hey, everybody. I recently made a trip to GameStop. When I say recently, I mean today to just browse a little bit and see what I could find. First off, as you can see, I finished off my Zelda Amiibo collection. I've been meaning to do that for quite a, quite some time. Just been putting it off. So I'll open those for you guys in a second. But what I wanted to show you is something I didn't even know existed. And it's this bad boy right here. As you can see, it's cheap. It costs 10 bucks. But it's a Majora's Mask 3D case for your 3DS. And as you'll see right here, as it focuses in, maybe it won't. It works with the new Nintendo 3DS XL. The new Nintendo 3DS, the 3DS XL, the, 3, the normal 3DS, and the 2DS. So it's compatible with all the 3DS systems. So I'm going to open this for you right here. I'm going to try to do it one-handed. I can't find my camera stand right now. Of course, it's really hard to do one-handed. Aha! Uh -huh. It's got these plastic tabs on the bottom here. Ugh. All right. Sorry about all the shaky camera. So as you can see, it's basically like a CD case shape. The old CD cases. It's got the official artwork on there. The same one used on the box art. The moon all the way on the back. And then on the inside, you want to hold it? On the inside. All right. So it's got six game six game spots and then take this over here and this is where the pouch that you put the 3ds in and you might even want to keep this in here depending on which model you have for extra protection so as you can see it's kind of a cheap little thing but it's it's a nice way to protect your, your 3ds or in this case the new nintendo 3ds xl um, i'm still looking for a hardcover case for this so i just don't scratch it um, the Hori cases exist, but Amazon does not have them in stock right now. That's why I don't have them. But, uh, yeah, kind of cool. So, that being said, like I said, 10 bucks at GameStop. I don't know if you can find these anywhere else. It might be a GameStop exclusive, but pretty cool. So, we'll open up these bad boys quick. Um, I do like collecting things, but I don't like keeping them in cases because... What's the point of collecting something if you're not going to take it out? Alright. So, this is Toon Link. A lot of you guys already have this. Toon Link Amiibo. Um, picked him up because obviously I want to complete my Zelda collection. And I don't think Toon Link's going to be made forever because they haven't made a new Toon style game since 2009 when Spirit Tracks came out. Alright, and this one's Link. This was a launch one that I never got. So, just take him out. So there's Link. And then, this is Sheep. That's Sheik, which, by the way, for those wondering, is female. Been confirmed by Bill Trennan at Nintendo. But, uh, yep, there you go. Uh, Sheik was obviously only in Ocarina of Time and Hyrule Warriors. So Sheik, like Toon Link, could also be one that's out of out of print soon. Or out of production, I should say. And then, obviously, I had my Zelda one that I bought at launch. There's my four Amiibo, and there's the brand new case in the back. As I said, this is 10 bucks. The Amiibos, you know, are about 13 So, yeah, pretty cool. Hope you guys like it, and hope you guys like adding to your Majora's Mask 3D collection. And that should about wrap it up this week. You can check me out uh, if you have a Twitter. You can check me out on Twitter, at Nate Chance. You can also obviously check out our website, at Zelda Informer. And uh, we have a Facebook, we have a Tumblr, we have all this great stuff. Put some links up and get you guys around. Be sure to subscribe to our channel if you like these videos. I know that this was a more serious video. And I know on my last video, if you want to go back and watch that last video, I was kind of ripping into Nintendo. And that's great, that's cool, that's dandy. Uh, you can go check that out if you want. But there's also videos I have where I theorize about Zelda U. And I got some awesome theories rolling around in this head that I want to bring out to you guys. Uh, but this week I felt like I needed to be a bit more somber, a bit more serious because I've been noticing an ongoing problem, and hey, let's just stop. Let's make a better tomorrow and a better Zelda Informer. All right, I will see you guys next time. Adios.